Hello and welcome again to my physical science online video lecture and lab supplement series. Today's video is going to be a lab walkthrough discussion and maybe some examples for one of the physical science online labs. This one is in fact for our first lab which is the reaction time lab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the lab procedure. And what you'll see here in this lab procedure, first of all, is an equipment list. Second, there's a summary of the experiment. And then some instructions on how to do the experiment. And then for many of my labs, I also have a further exploration section. This one's pretty uh, long. There's a lot of math in the further exploration. Basically, the rule with my labs is you're supposed to do the experiment itself to get full credit. The further exploration portion is really just for your own benefit. So with that said, what equipment are you going to need for this lab? Well, you need a meter stick. A yardstick is fine. A ruler is maybe a little on the short side, but probably would work as long as you've got a reasonable reaction time. You need two hands, a right hand and a left hand, and you need a friend who will act as your lab partner. Note if for some reason you have only a right hand or only a left hand, well, you can always ask your lab partner to loan you their left hand or right hand. In any case, what you're going to be doing in this lab is trying to figure out your reaction time. Preferably, if you have two hands, you'll have a dominant hand, you'll have a non-dominant hand. Most people are right-handed, so for most people, the dominant hand is going to be the right hand. And basically what you will be doing is your lab partner will hold the meter stick so that it is above your hand, just hovering slightly above your hand. Then they will, without telling you, let go of the meter stick and you will try to catch it. So you can see my other video via webcam for how this should look in setup. Basically, to recap as a drawing, your start position should be something like this. Here you are, here's your partner, your partner's holding the meter stick, your partner's holding the meter stick just above your hand, your hand is ready to catch the meter stick when your partner releases it. The meter stick will fall some distance. So basically, the partner releases it, the meter stick maybe falls like this, and then you have caught it and you're measuring how far has it fallen before you catch it. We can label this as delta Y or delta X or delta H, whatever you want. So the first question is, how far does the meter stick fall in each case in meters? Now note, you are presumably using a meter stick which has marks in millimeters and centimeters. So if we zoom in on the meter stick, it will look something like this. And in fact, this goes all the way down to zero and this goes all the way up to 100. So eight centimeters, nine centimeters, 10 centimeters, and these smaller tick marks each represent millimeters. So this would be eight centimeters plus one millimeter or 8.2 centimeters, 8.3, excuse me, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. Usually the half marks are a little longer, so 8.5, etc and 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5, on up to 9.9, .9, and then 10. So what happens is you let the stick fall, and then your hand manages to grab it at some point, like so. So it has, in this case, fallen some distance since the zero mark started right above these fingers. You can basically see where did you grab it. So 19, 19.1, 19.2, 19.3, 19.4, this represents 19.5 centimeters. So we'd write delta Y 
is equal to 19.5 centimeters and you're supposed to convert that to meters. So 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. These are actually exact, but I'm putting the decimal points in here for a reason. Basically, if you take this decimal point and move it over one, two, then you've converted from centimeters into meters. So here's the decimal point here. Here's where the decimal point would have been here. So moving this thing over two, we'd have one, two. That's 0 0.195 meters. So that's what you'd be recording in this first line here where it says how far does the stick hand uh, fall before you catch it and then you repeat for the non-dominant hand here. In the event that for some reason you can't find a meter stick that has centimeters on it and all you can find is rulers with inches well you may have some problems then but for example maybe this happens how do you deal with that? Well, the conversion factor is that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Now, the thing you got to be careful with on the inches thing is that if you count how many divisions they make, it's typically not 10. So these little tick marks on the rulers usually don't actually represent 0.1. Instead, they represent something like 1 eighth or 1 16th. So this one inch, you might get, let's say, one and maybe, let's say, three sixteenths inches. Uh, or more realistically, maybe you have six and three sixteenths inches. So how many is that in meters? Well, we have to do a conversion in order to get the answer there. So let's get myself a little more workspace. Um, obviously the meter stick would continue here but I'm gonna just break it. So your conversion is that you have six and three sixteenths inches which is equal to basically six plus three over sixteen. So let's first figure out how many three sixteenths is. So three divided by sixteen is equal to 0.1875. Add six to that. So here's how many inches that is as a decimal. So this is 6.1875 inches. And then you have to multiply that by 2.54 centimeters per one inch. And since we're doing this anyway, we might as well go the full conversion, one meter per 100 centimeters. These are actually both exact conversions. So we take this number, we'd multiply by 2.54, then we'd have to divide that by 100. So it, this 6 and 3 sixteenths inches is really 0.1571625 meters. Presumably you don't really know it to that much detail so I would probably end up recording that as delta y is approximately oh say 0 0.157 meters. Keeping three significant figures is fine for now. You're going to end up doing some averaging later, and it'll kind of come out with the wash. So the next step is that it wants you to figure out what the time is in seconds for this uh, fall distance. So the equation that you're using is that the time in seconds is twice the distance in meters divided by 9.8. If you're taking the lecture version of this class, you'll discover that the reason why that is is because this meter stick is in what's called free fall. And so the equation that describes an object in free fall looks like this. Delta Y is equal to 1 half times G times T squared plus whatever the initial speed was in y times t. 
you're dropping it so this is actually zero when you drop an object the initial speed of the object is the speed that you're moving when you drop it at since you're standing still this should be zero and this term right here is free fall acceleration so free fall acceleration is basically 9.8 meters per second squared uh, that's as long as you're standing somewhere on the earth while you're doing this presumably since you're taking a physical science class you are in fact standing somewhere on the earth while you do this okay so basically what's happening is we're rearranging this equation so that it says t squared is 2 delta y and then if we want to get rid of the squared here we take a square root of both sides and uh, this was a gt squared so we'd have to have divided both sides by a g first and then take the square root so this is what the time is going to look like and it will give you the time in seconds as long as you have this distance in meters and that's why we went ahead and converted this to meters so let's get that time for both these distances so what would that look like uh, let's give me a little more workspace again and the two fall distances that I have to work with basically I had this one from the earlier from one example and I have this one from the other example so let's say that this is delta y1 maybe this is delta y2 so t1 would be square root of 2 times delta y1 which is 0.195 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared and you can see here that we have meters we have meters and then the other unit is per second squared so per second squared is in the denominator that's the same as if you had second squared in here so now we can throw everything into our calculator and get as follows uh, the order I have to go in 2 times 0.195 divided by 9.8 8 and you get this number and then you want to take a square root of it which is this button so the time is 0 0.19948 so we might record this as 0 0.199 seconds so that is the fall time for for number one for number two we'd have t2 is equal to square root of 2 times 0 0.157 meters that's this guy divided by 9.8 meters per second squared and again meters and meters could cancel out and so you're left with the over per second squared or second squared you're taking a square root so t2 if we throw these guys into the calculator is going to be 2 times 0.157 divided by 9.8 and then we take a square root and we get 0.178999 so that would be 0.179 if we round it off to 3 0 0.179 seconds okay so maybe this represents the left hand and the right hand or vice versa so that's what you'd be recording in these two places so you've done this that gives you a nice baseline for your reaction time but that's not necessarily really what your reaction time was because you've only done it once you might have been not paying attention when your partner dropped it you may have been distracted you may have uh, sort of anticipated that they were dropping it and therefore grabbed before they you know before you actually registered that they dropped it and gotten lucky so what we do next is we repeat this 
10 times for each hand. So the same thing that you just did, do it 10 more times. Get the fall distance and then calculate the reaction time and then do it for your other hand. Fall distance, reaction time. The calculations are all the same that I just did. And so once you've done that, you can calculate what's called the percent difference between the two. Percent difference is basically going to be, if you're just comparing two numbers, so there's no theoretical value or experimental value per se here, or they're both experimental values, if you will. The, the way that you do it is you take one value, you subtract the other value from it, and you divide by the average of the two values, and then you multiply by 100%. So this is sometimes called the relative difference or the percent difference between the two values. So let's look at what that is in context of the two pieces of the data that we have. Okay, recall that you at this point will have done the entire experiment and you'll have average values, but for expediency we're going to use these two values. So let's say that this one represents y and this one would represent x in the percent difference. So percent difference is basically y minus x. You can in fact take an absolute value divided by y plus x quantity over 2. And then all of that is times 100 percent. So the percent difference in this particular one would basically be T1 minus T2, take an absolute value, divided by T1 plus T2, divided by 2, times 100%. So if we wanted to plug the numbers in for that, it'd be 0 0.199 seconds minus 0 0.179 seconds divided by the sum of these two, 0 0.199 seconds plus 0 0.179 seconds, and that's divided by 2 times 100 percent. So because of the calculator that I have on screen to show you with is a little um, not the best calculator in the world, frankly. It's, uh, you know, I can't complain too much. It comes free with the operating system, but here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to calculate the top number, then I'm going to calculate the bottom number, then I'm going to go back and divide the two. So the top number was uh, 0.199 minus 0.179, so 0 0.02. So our percent difference at this point looks like 0 0.02 seconds divided by, so now we do the divided by part, 0 0.199 plus 0.179, and then that has to be divided by 2, so we get 0 0.189. 0 0.189 seconds and this is times 100 percent. So now we can plug everything into our calculator to get that percent difference. If I push on this one the 1 over x it basically divides 1 by this so now I can multiply that by 0 0.02 and then this gets multiplied by 100 percent so the percent difference is about 10.58, so usually we round that off to maybe two significant figures. It means that our percent difference is approximately 11% for these two. And that basically covers everything that we would be doing in this particular lab that you actually have to do. You'd record those two numbers here and here. And once you've done that, you'll go online and take the lab's quiz. So I hope that you found this video helpful. And good luck doing this lab. And thanks for watching.